Hello and welcome to our guide to map boxes. In this video, we want to go over everything you need to know about map boxes and why they aren't just a way to make your camera look better and more professional. So we'll be going over why we use them, how to use them, and some things that are worth thinking about when buying or renting a map box. So what is a map box? Well, you've probably seen several different sizes of them across a huge range of sets. And that's because they are used across a massive range of productions and they have two key purposes. The first is to help control the light coming into your lens. This is done via the hood as well as the French flags, which are the top flags and barn doors, which are the side flags. These can help control light coming into your lens quickly and easily, which can help reduce or cut flare or glare consistently across your shots, as well as increasing contrast in your image. The second key feature to a matte box is adding filtration. The system for doing this has been designed to be quick, easy and versatile and this is why it has become the standard for cinema work over a screw on system which can be much more cumbersome and time consuming to use. There are several different sizes of cinema filters available such as 4x4, 4x5.65 and 6x6 which you will then be able to use across a range of lenses with different front diameters. This saves time and means you handle the filters less when you do lens swaps. In this video we'll be using the ARRI LMB 4x5 as the example matte box as it is a really versatile system with a range of different ways to customise it, so it is a great way to cover the different parts of what makes up a matte box. The overall build quality and design of a matte box can be drastically different. Really this will come down to the cost of it and the camera system it's aimed at. This can be size, weight, materials and what accessories are offered for that system. Carbon fibre matte boxes have become very popular over the past few years because of carbon fibre's durability and weight. More often than not, more expensive matte boxes will be lighter, be more flexible, have large ecosystems with accessories around it, and be more intuitive to use. The LMB 4x5 has a huge range of accessories no matter what you need to do with it, such as the accessory mount, which will allow you to attach a 3816 mountable accessory, such as a focus rangefinder, onto the 4x5. For lower end camera packages, adding a matte box is a nice way of adding a bit of extra weight to your rig, and they can also help protect your camera and lens. What matte box you need will come down to what camera system you are planning to use. We'll make some recommendations later on in the video. Mounting a matte box can be broken down into two ways, by using a 15 or 19mm bar solution or clamping it directly onto your lens. Clamping onto your lens is mainly used with lighter weight matte box configurations, as it's not a good idea to hang lots of weight on the front of your lens unsupported. You will see people using clamp on matte boxes on rigs where weight is really crucial such as for handheld operation or gimbal configurations. Lots of matte boxes support this, but there are several implementations of how it connects to your lens. For example, the 4x5 uses different clamp-on plates which are available in several different diameters and can be quickly swapped out and clamped down onto the outside of your lens. Whereas if we look at the Bright Tangerine Misfit Atom, which is a really lightweight matte box, you can use a threaded donut for lenses with front filter threads. This will mainly be stills lenses, however some cine lenses like Sigmas do have them or you can use these clamp-on adapter rings which are essentially adding the space needed for smaller lenses to clamp down onto. However, this doesn't mean that you can't use any of these solutions with a bar support system. The second way to mount your matte box is by using a bar mount system. This can be either 15mm or 19mm, depending on what kind of size camera package and situation is being used on. 15mm is more common on smaller configurations, whereas 19mm is mainly for larger camera packages and studio configurations. The ARRI 4x5 can be used on either very easily by swapping out the bar module at the bottom. With matte boxes that don't feature a swing away mechanism, you will have to just slide the matte box up and down the bars when you want to change your lens. Whereas a swing away one will allow you to remove the matte box from the lens much faster, as you can swing it out of the way, change your lens and then swing it back into place without moving its position on the bars. This will make it much easier and faster to do lens swaps, and if you're working with an AC on set, this will make them very happy to see. If you're planning on mounting your matte box in this way, one thing worth thinking about before purchasing or renting a matte box is the height you need your bars from your optical center. For this, we need to look at the standard that ARRI as well as many others follow. In this image here, we can see that three different setups. A 15 mm lightweight setup requires the bars to be 85 mm from the optical center of your lens and 60 mm apart, and a standard 19 mm studio setup will need to be 120 mm from the optical center of your lens and 104 mm apart. Most support systems designed for your specific camera system will give you the correct height needed for your matte box as well as other accessories to be at the correct height. 
whereas universal rigs will most likely have the ability to change the height of the 15mm bar mount so you can adjust it to your camera's sensor height. When using a matte box in this configuration, you still want to make sure that your lens doesn't have any gaps between it and the clamp around it. Otherwise, stray light can get in and this can cause reflections on the filter as well as other light leaks and bounce. You can either use one of the solutions we mentioned earlier, however another set of popular options are black holes, donuts, rubber bellows or nun snickers. This is a rubber or dark fabric adapter that will allow you to use a range of lenses with different diameters with it. This is an affordable way to use a matte box across different lenses without needing a bunch of different size clamp-on adapters. Some matte boxes can also be tilted so you can eliminate filter reflection if you need to. The flags and barn doors can be mounted on the top, bottom or on the sides of the matte box depending on what direction the light you want to cut them is coming in at. All you have to do is loosen the screws on the flags, adjust it to where you need to cut your light and tighten it off. These flags more often than not will have extensions that you can swing out to help cut light even further. You can easily remove them as well if you need to run a more stripped down configuration for lighter camera packages. Some operators do like to grip onto the sides of the matte box like a set of handles sometimes when shooting handheld. However, this is really a personal preference thing and not something that I would recommend unless you are certain your camera is rigged up securely and that it's a shooting style you want and are comfortable with. Mats or hard mats are placed at the front of the matte box and are another way for you to control and block light from coming into the matte box which again should help reduce unwanted flares. These will be designed to be used with their specific matte boxes and will have different cutouts depending on the format size and focal length you are shooting at. With the ARRI 4x5 we have here, they offer five sizes of both their spherical and anamorphic mats which can then simply be pushed into the front of the matte box using these four protrusions as support. Using the correct cutout for your lens and format is important as choosing the wrong one can cause underexposure and misshapen bokeh around your out of focus highlights. A good rule of thumb is to not use a mat with a smaller opening than the front diameter of the lens you are using. This will help avoid the chances of unwanted side effects. The second major function of the matte box is using filters, and there are several different implementations of mounting them into your matte box. This can be via the use of filter trays in which you can put the filter in a tray and then insert it into the matte box, or via mechanisms built into the matte box, such as the clamp used here on the Misfit Atom. Good filter trays are designed to hold the filter securely while you handle it and prevent as much light leakage and bouncing as possible. Filters come in various different sizes with common sizes being 4x4, 4x5.65, 5.65x5.65 and 6x6. When buying a matte box it's worth noting what size filters you can use with it. You can use filters with the same height in matte boxes that can accept that height, even if it can take wider filters. Some matte boxes will have different stages and this is referring to how many filters can be inserted into the matte box. This is so you can stack filters if you need to, such as an ND and some kind of diffusion. Some filter trays can be rotated. This is traditionally for graduated filters, so you can keep the horizon level with the gradient and polarizers so you can rotate them until the reflections you are trying to remove have been reduced. However, with creative filters coming out more and more, they can also be used creatively, such as with a streak filter. Normally, larger filters are better for this. One handy tip when you're using a matte box is to grab some gaff tape and a marker pen and use it to denote what filter you have in what tray on the side of the hood or on the filter trays to make swapping filters out much faster. There are also trays with filters built in such as the Tiffin Multi-Rotor Tray which is a really versatile little system. When it comes to filters, there are so many different options available. We've been thinking about creating a video going over filters and what they do to your image so if this is something that sounds interesting to you, let us know down in the comments. Another type of filter that requires a slightly different set of accessories are diopters or close focus filters or lenses. These can be really handy to use if you want to quickly grab a close up without having to switch out to a macro lens. These will require their own specific trays or some can come already fitted into their standard trays for mounting. Did you know diopter is actually a unit of measurement even though it has become how we refer to these filters within the industry? They can come in different strengths such as plus one, plus two, plus three, the higher the number, the greater the strength and the closer you can focus. As diopter is a measurement, we can easily convert this into millimetres, which you can see here. You can even stack them, and stacking them is really easy and understandable as they simply just add together. So if you want or need to use a diopter in your next production, you need to make sure whatever matte box you want to use has the option to do so and what diopters are compatible with it. When choosing a matte box and filters for a production, the format size and focal length you will be shooting with will determine what system will work without potentially running into vignetting. This is something that is impossible to cover fully in a video 
and for wide angle lenses with larger formats, testing is the only way to be 100% sure a system will work. Normally 6x6 filters are preferred with larger formats, but Bright Tangerine have made their frame safe clamp on adapters which should help with this when using 4x5 filters, but again, testing before production is key here. As much as I would love to suggest the Ari LMB 4x5 or Bright Tangerine Misfit Kick to everyone as they are two of my favourite matte box systems, I understand that these can be quite an investment for some people and they may actually not be the best solution for you. So I've put together some recommendations at the low, medium, high price points when it comes to lightweight 15mm and 19mm systems. Hoping now that you understand everything that goes into a matte box, you can now make an informed decision on exactly what you need and which type of matte box you need for your next production. So that's been our guide to map boxes. We hope it's taught you something and shown you why they're an awesome tool to use as a filmmaker and are not used just to make your camera look better and more professional. Let us know if you use a map box and if you think there are any other topics we can cover like this in the future down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video please consider hitting the like button and subscribing and thank you so much for watching.